my colleagues and I walked into the Mandel residence, we were just overwhelmed by the beauty of the home, the way this very contemporary house was so hospitable to a gorgeous selection of art. One of the works in the collection that is the most beautiful is Mark Rothko's untitled painting from 1969. It just was like an ember on this wall smoldering with this beautiful palette of orange and red, very close valued, which was overlaid by this cloud of white paint. Most of his last work is characterized by a kind of darkness, by a darker palette. So this is a surprise. When you see this painting, you don't think it's 1969, you think it's 1957. It partakes more of the beautiful palette that he used in his most mature years. It both reflects light, the white kind of pushes the light out, and it absorbs light. The reds and the oranges bring you in, bring light into the picture. There's a very subtle play with the edges and the borders and the spaces between the red, the orange, and the white. So what Rothko was really, really concentrating on is that tension, that little space between edge, between color blocks. I read that he said, when you have exhausted a medium, when you have achieved greatness, you have to try something a little bit harder. And it is indeed harder to create the same kind of effects he got in his majestic canvases on paper. When collectors like the Mandels set out to acquire art, they're buying what appeals to them and what appeals to their eye. So through bringing together these works in juxtaposition, the Mandels are creating conversations and dialogues that are actually grounded in art history, but yet come from deeply personal choices.